Brittany Griner is home. She's back on U.S. soil a day after she was released from Russian detention in a one-for-one -one prisoner swap that involved arms dealer Victor Boot. Griner landed in Texas early this morning. Let's go to our colleague CNN's Rosa Flores in San Antonio. What a day, what a moment to be there. Absolutely, Poppy. Good morning. You know, there was no big public spectacle. There was no big fanfare to welcome Brittany, Gr Brittany Griner here to the United States. What we could see from the ground was her plane land here at Kelly Field in San Antonio. Then the WNBA star walked off the plane and she walked into a hangar. Those were her first steps as a free American on U.S. soil. Brittany Griner is finally home. The WNBA star landed in San Antonio early this morning after nearly 10 months detained in Russia. The most important emotion that I have right now is just sincere gratitude. Griner is returning home to her family, teammates, and a legion of supportive fans. We love you and we are here for you. Uh, we know that the journey that she has just experienced was a very difficult one, but we're here to walk with her step by step. The Biden administration secured Griner's release in a high-stakes prisoner swap with arms dealer Victor Boot after months of negotiations. I'm proud that today we have made one more family whole again. So welcome home, Brittany. Griner is seen here leaving Russian detention, boarding a plane, given her passport and realizing she is heading home. Are you ready for a flight? Uh, yes. Yes. The swap took place in Abu Dhabi, where the two were seen passing each other on the tarmac. The WNBA star was detained in Russia back in February after cannabis oil was found in her suitcase at an airport in the Moscow region. She was sentenced to nine years in prison in early August and was moved to a penal colony in mid-November after losing her appeal. Paul Whelan, another American detained in Russia, was notably left out of the exchange. The Biden administration has come under fire for not securing his release. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. The choice was one or none. A senior administration official tells CNN the Biden administration has ideas for new forms of offers they are going to try with Russia in an effort to bring Whelan home. President Biden spoke to Whelan's sister on Thursday. There are a lot of people moaning and groaning about Victor Boot going uh, back to Russia. But I've got to say, uh, it's an amazing thing to be able to get Brittany back. So I would urge everyone to, uh, you know, to keep their partisan sniping out of it. CNN spoke by phone with Whelan. I would say that if um, a message could go to President Biden that, um, you know, this is a precarious situation that needs to be resolved quickly. And back to Brit Brittany Griner, U.S. officials not saying exactly what will happen once she is on the ground now that she's here on U.S. soil, but they do say that she will be transferred to a medical facility mm -hmm. for an evaluation. And Caitlin, I should mention that just moments ago, our colleague MJ Lee learning from U.S. officials uh, who spoke to Brittany Griner saying that she is in good spirits and incredibly gracious. Wow. Caitlin. That is great to hear, Rosa. Thank you for being there. Well, the WNBA, the NBA, their players never gave up. They kept Brittany Griner in the public eye during 10 months of detention in Russia. They highlighted her initials on their courts. They wore her number at the All-Star Game and continuously pushed on her case. Griner's team, the Phoenix Mercury, tweeted each day, every day, counting how many days she was detained. But yesterday, this is what they tweeted no more days. She is coming home. Joining us now for her first television interview since the news is WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert. Commissioner, thank you. Um, what news? I'm so happy that we can share this with our viewers, and I just wonder what your thoughts are this morning. Yeah, what a day yesterday. Um, obviously, we knew for a couple days that uh, negotiations were intensifying, but this has been a 10-month process, and the brave men and women of the State Department and the administration, you know, that's why the, we, you heard so much gratitude. It's just an amazing outcome for Brittany and her family. I can't imagine as a mom myself, her parents, her mom and dad right now, and her wife, Sherelle, and just, you know, what's going on down in Texas a, 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 in a reunited situation. I can, you know, just so much joy, and um, Brittany really deserved to be home. She was wrongfully detained, and uh, we're happy that she's reuniting with her family today. Now that she's home, can you
you take us behind the scenes of the past few days, these indications you were getting? Because you have said that you had been working the WNBA with the State Department and the Biden administration to help free her. And there was really nothing you could say while you were working on that. But now that she's home, what can you share? Well, again, since February, since her detention, and then in April, when the State Department deemed her wrongfully detained, we've been working with the Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs, knowing, uh, Poppy, that how geopolitically complex the moment was and the situation and how hard these men and women of the State Department uh, are working. Um, you know, they would say, we're all Brittany all the time. And obviously, they're working on all wrongfully detained Americans around the, around the globe. So really, just the courage that they showed, the resilience that Brittany showed. I mean, this was not an easy 10 months. And, and just, you know, we're anxious to get to talk to her. We're anxious to uh, the players, the WNBA players, kept her front and center, you know, and uh, they're the rock stars as well. She wrote you um, letters from there. And I know she wrote you even just a few months ago. Um, I wonder what you can share and also what you're going to say to her when you get to talk to her. I will say, you know, her, her letter handwritten um, before she got moved further outside of Moscow was inspiring. She was hanging in there. She ended the letter with, you know, just uh, thankfulness, gratefulness to me personally and to the WNBA for the support. And again, the, there were various strategies over the course of the 10 months about how to best uh, put Brittany in the limelight, how to stay behind the scenes, how to work with the State Department. We knew legal and diplomatically we didn't have a lot of options. So really, the prisoner to prisoner trade was exchange was the only option um, that became very uh, clear early on. So, you know, uh, we were writing her about every six weeks. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, she was not there for the entire season. So she was very missed by the players. During the season, they had kind of a heavy burden to play without her, especially in Phoenix at the Phoenix Mercury. So, um, and I, I can't wait to talk to her and just, you know, tell her how much we were thinking of her the whole time because it was very hard. We couldn't call her, she couldn't call us. Uh, very, just how much we thought about her and how much, you know, um, you know, we'll give time and space and whatever she needs. But, you know, I know the players are very anxious to, to fly anywhere to see her right yes. now, and as am I. Kathy, I want to take this moment to highlight an issue that you and I have talked about for many years now uh, since you became commissioner, and that is uh, disparity in pay for WNBA players and real lack of equality. The reason Brittany Griner went and why, you know, New York Times reports about half of the WNBA players go abroad to play in the offseason is be financial reasons. It's because of, it's because of pay disparity. Um, could, could you speak to that in this moment? She wouldn't have been in Russia were it not for them, were not for that. Right. So one of the things we're chipping away at, we're trying to transform the business economics of this league and of women's sports. Women's sports are um, very much underinvested in less than 1% of all corporate sponsorship dollars go towards women's sports in, in the sports world. And less than 5% of all media coverage of sports goes towards women's sports. So we're trying to move the needle you know, on those uh, numbers and we're chipping away at that. We have our WNBA change makers, our big corporate partners now that are helping us drive higher pay. We've tripled the pay of the top player. A player can now make up to 700,000 for about the four and a half month season that we run. So we're chipping away at the benefits are getting better, but you know, we're, we're, we're literally transforming this organization and we hope we put up a half million dollar prize pool for our in-season competition, the mm -hmm. Commissioner's Cup. So I understand the frustration. And I also think as a former college athlete, uh, WNBA wasn't around when I came out, but I also think players want to play. This is their craft. This is, yep. they are professional working women and they want to play. And yep. a lot of them want to play year round. And some of them don't get a lot of playing time in the WNBA. So we're never going to say they can't play in other leagues in our off season. Yep. Uh, but we're focused on driving higher pay for sure, driving opportunities yep. to pay the players and to get them better <laughs> benefits. And, but we need the whole sports ecosystem to step up I here was... and help value, value the league. I was just going to say this is a moment for those big corporations, big media companies you're talking about to step up to that. Quickly before you go, does this experience mean that you will advise WNB player, NBA players against playing abroad? At least, obviously, they can't go to Russia right now, but in other countries with similar real ge geopolitical concerns, China and others. 
Yeah, what, what we do is, you know, players are going to make the best decisions for themselves, especially our younger players who need to improve their game, and they're going to play year-round. They're going to train year-round. But we're providing more opportunities here at home, whether it's through mm -hmm. internships, player marketing agreements. We'll have 10 players under marketing agreements in this offseason, so they don't go overseas. They get paid by us, spend about mm -hmm. $1.5 million on that this offseason. So, so, again, as I said, Poppy, we're chipping away at it. You know, Rome wasn't built in the day, but, you know, we're not going to prevent the players from doing it they know their bodies yeah. the average tenure of a professional athlete in our league is five years so they want to get as much play and they want to get as great as possible to put the greatest product on the court so we're never going to say no we do advise them of security risks in different country we just had one in turkey we have players right now in turkey there was that explosion in istanbul so we're always advising players of kind of the geopolitical risk and, and most mostly the security risks of playing uh, where they play but again we're not going to prevent them from doing that but we do want to provide you know, a, a better holistic player experience here at home during the WNBA season. Kathy, thank you for your time this morning. We are uh, elated, to say the least, for, for the WNBA. And thanks for, for fighting for equality on all those fronts. Yes, thank you, Poppy.